welcome back to some more Fulton Most Ball 4 today. We'll continue on Let's Play. This is episode 270. In today's episode, we'll take a look at the Class B North American Tour. For that, we need a B Class North American car, and for that, we're heading to Pontiac for the 2009 Pontiac Solstice GXP. Hmm. The interesting choice. Um, comes in a lot of colours. I'll go for a white one, because why not? It might be in here and sometimes out here. Don't make my food yet. Fair enough. Listen, it's it, it's early. There's still plenty of stuff to come. Uh, this car has body kits. They're, they're oh horrific. Oh god! So uh, probably not gonna uh, use any of. Uh, actually, there that one's go. not too bad. That just adds a bit more definition to it. So we'll go with that. Uh, but yeah, the rest of it's pretty tragic. Uh, we can stick a V8 in it, which we're not going to do. Hi, I'm sorry. Hi. No, you're okay. Don't worry about it. Good. I assume it's... Uh, oh, it's Solstice. Yes, I'm assuming Brazzers was calling about you paying your bill. Oh. Uh. <sighs> Alright. Uh, gearbox. Can we get an air filter in it for A501? Did I stick a diff in it? I did. Um, I've now thrown myself off because I don't know what to... Nope, that's not working. Someone's got to make this. I really hate building cars to exact PI on this game, because the game just tries to fuck you in any which way it can. <laughs> right, there we go. B500, done. Uh, only tortilla, not with the beans and the rest of I, To be honest with you, I just have Doritos. <laughs> I don't mm. even do t tortillas, I'm afraid. Anyways, uh, cla oh, wait, tortilla... Yeah. Class B North American Tour. This series for Class B cars is held on American tracks and is open to all B-Class cars. Invinium Long Course is first. We do need the dollar. I agree. Uh, good afternoon, Roman. Uh, hello, JF. Hello, AJ. I think I might have said that. We'll say it again. How are we all today, chaps? Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. Anyways, <laughs> nice Pontiac. Thank you. It's uh, not quite as good as the Fiero and some of the other beauties. Looks we've like had. a TVR. It does look like a TVR according to Top Gear, and they're kind of right <laughs> when you think about it. It does actually have quite a TVR look to it, in fairness. Yeah, but at least it's not the inferior model that only produces 180 horsepower. No, this one produces 260 horsepower from a 2 liter engine. Isn't it the which same is, as the. Which is considerably more respectful when you think about it. It's a Vectra VXR engine, I think. How oh, excellent. I thought. Wait, those were turbo? Yeah, because the, they had. At least as far as I'm aware, they had the same engine as the Astra VXR. But they oh. tuned it up a bit because they thought the Vectra could handle the power more. It couldn't. And then the Insignia yeah, had a 2.8 V6 bi turbo. I'll say bi turbo because it makes me sound more posh and efficient. Built a Lotus Land with perfect balance. The Lotus Land's a pretty darn good car in like any Forza game, so. What does last Monday stream mean? It means it's the last Monday stream for a while because I'm going to go in a touring car race. I mentioned that at the start. Mm? Yay! Because that's back on. Technically, testing's back on today as well, but I kind of forgot about that, so I'm not there. Whoa. Uh, and also, this desk needs, like, rebuilding desperately. Mm. It beats unbeatable driver cars. Yeah, the Elan's always been a pretty, like, um... It was basically the leaderboard car since, like, Forza 2. And then, um... What happened after that? Oh, in Forza 7 they tried to nerf it and it didn't work. Be back in 10 Well, you yeah, can't for... fix what ain't broke. Huh? You can't fix what ain't broke. Agreed. Will you come back and play Forza 4? Um, yeah. I, I'll be honest, Forza 4 you're probably going to see a bit less off soon because we've got a lot of this game on the backlog. So... 
Yeah. I think we're a hundred episodes ahead of what the actual put out thing is, and San Andreas doesn't even end for another two months. So, like, when I tell you this, episode 232, I edited that the other day. I've stopped editing just in case I have to change the intro screen, but uh, that takes us to the 16th of May. So, we're about two and a half months ahead of schedule, and I've still got 40 plus more episodes to edit. So, yeah. Um, Hey, oh. no, no, don't worry about them. I, mm. I don't care, it's a stream chat. I forget what half of most people say anyway. Just say subscribe <laughs> to Boost and Ethel if you want to be remembered. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> that's it. But yeah, the plan is I, I, we're going to finish through this North American tour and a few other bits and then we'll see. In theory, if I'm only doing one stream a week on this, it might end up coming back around to being on semi-reasonable, but I don't know. I have another LP in the pipeline that I kind of want to get done this year, so. Realistically, what I'd like to do is get this to, like, last until the end of this year, but I think by recent calculations, if I record this all the way through, get it finished, it will, and, like, after San Andreas is done, this thing that ends up on the channel, it ends in August. Which isn't really enough for me. Hmm. I kind of want like a November or a December end date, so. But there's other games we can play. I'm sure. Hmm. <laughs> there's, there's, there's another big game which isn't really that big. But gets long towards the end that we could think about, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. It's developed by a name of a studio that rhymes with polyphane. And, and just I can't the think game of any is, studio. And is the game numbered five by any chance? Potentially, yes. <laughs> oh boy. How, how do you make out that polyphony rhymes with polyphane? You just did it right there. No, they don't rhyme. Polly, Polly, your name's Holly. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm really tired. I'll be honest. Yeah, I can bet. I was okay when you fall unconscious. I can start talking about Bitcoin. Go for yeah. it. Great. I, I, I actually no. no no wait wait for the next. Ooh, I'm trying to think. Oh, we had an idea, Emil. I'm trying to think topic. what's the most. Bitcoin car. Well, you've already passed Tesla. Yeah. Nah, Tesla people don't invest in Bitcoin, they ain't that smart. Yes, they do. They invest in Dogecoin. They like to take no. risks on underdeveloped products. People mm. with Audi e-trons invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I mean, Tesla themselves have bought loads of Bitcoin, so... Yeah, because Tesla is an undeveloped company. <laughs> There's a lot of, um, unironically, there's a lot of arguments that's a better store of value. So I've, I've become an uh, economicist. Have you person. invested any money? Oh, I've got in Bitcoin, yeah, non-actual stocks and stuff, because they uh. wouldn't let me make an account. Why? I still don't know why. Oh. I started getting, like, a, what's it called? Um, I don't know. I think I still have the app on my phone. I, I'll give yeah. you... Okay, here's an idea. Hargraves Lansdane. Here's an idea. If I give you 100 quid, you can keep 50% yeah. of what you make from it, but you have to make me more than 100 quid back. Uh, the current rate Bitcoin's going, I think that's quite <laughs> possible. Nah, Ironically, It'll crash again, probably. <clears throat> yeah, it does that. But that's the amazing thing. Why am I getting a phone call from Swansea? What? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, that might be from a university, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Hello, we are, are watching the stream, your financial advice is incredibly... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even given that I think yet. Twitter's doing that now, you know, where they put disclaimers saying this isn't financial advice or something on it. Oh, excellent. Unlike Keemstar tweets, because he keeps tweeting about it. LMP2 or LMP1, which car class is fastest? LMP1 is the premier class of that one. LMP2 is a spec-ish series. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Or is it a spawn uh, piece? Uh, um, you have to use the same engines and everything, don't you? I just wrote MP2 and... Military yeah, well, police. LMP1 is being replaced by LM5 car, I believe. LMP4? Yeah, that's for cars that are oh. basically like F4 cars. They're powered by like there's, Renault Clio. However, engines. there's no formally re recognised LMP4 class or regulations. <laughs> nice. If there was, yeah. it'd probably uh, be like Clio engined high downforce things. Until LMP2 uh, open close. Okay, LMP2 can be open cockpit apparently. Can it? Uh, yeah, apparently. Why would you ever go for open cockpit? Oh no, though it's not fixed one. There are loads of. Oh right, there were four companies selected by the FIA to be chassis constructors. Uh oh, and they had to be closed cockpit. Oh. Open cockpits do kind of make sense in some ways. I think it's just more draggy. More drag, but you get lower center of gravity. You get. Uh, it's easier to do driver swaps. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I don't know, there's a couple of other advantages, I think, I don't know. Those are the main ones. Wouldn't the drag, like, offset it, though? That's kind of what I'd think, especially at Le Mans. Brazil uh, has LMP4, that probably makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder it's not officially recognised. Yeah. Come to Brazil. The Bugatti Belade, probably... Wait, is that going racing? No. Oh. I mean, no, it wouldn't surprise me if it a... does, but... Really? What do you think no, about right. it? Bugatti, Bugatti, kind of, when you think about it, is actually sort of running on borrowed time at the moment, because their biggest claim to fame was making the fastest car in the world. That's gone out the window now, and there's only so long they can trade on that, so eventually they will have to go racing again to try and, like... Um, that's what they were, the they built window. race cars. They still have the fastest car in the world. No, they They're don't. They no, that never got classified because it's not a real car. Oh, right, yeah. There's a prototype. Yeah, but everyone believes it is. Yeah, but Guinness doesn't. They never recognised the Super Sport either, yet yeah, that still came, did? Like, no, they recognised the Super Sport. Did they? Yeah, Volkswagen basically gave them a lot of money to say this is real. <laughs> and they turned oh, around right, going, nice. well, you bet your sweet pippity it is. So... I think the fastest car is still classified <laughs> as the Agera. I think. Oh, uh, no, isn't it the SSC now? Because like the 280. No, oh, wait, the, I have quick the, the Agera. From 284. Oh, did it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it was the two way average that you need to count. Yeah, 284. And the Agera. No, wasn't it like 277? Oh, it could have been actually. I don't know, go and Google that. Versus top speed. List of speed records. Uh, There's not been nearly as much excitement over fastest car as there since like the Veyron happened. The speed you might not remember the moon. It because you was like two, but like when the Veyron was coming out, that was like a big fucking deal. Oh, I bet. like there was literally for like five, six years, there was just every fucking car magazine had a report on the Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, to be fair, it had been like a decade since the last, like, you know, since the McLaren F1 and whatever. It would be a decade. Yeah, but... Yeah, about that. It's like even the 300 mile per hour barrier, though. No one was really that bothered about it. Mm. No, that's true. Yeah, but as you said, they didn't technically do it, I guess, so there wasn't that much hype. I don't think the Jesco is the quickest car in the world, because the Jesco has more drag. Yeah, the Jesko. Well, there's that absolute thing, isn't there? I still think that's got too much drag to do. It. No, the oh, absolute isn't. thing doesn't, I don't think. The traditional Jesko, yeah, with the wing, definitely too much drag. I still love it how oh Forza put the wrong Jesko in the game. Sorry, <laughs> I've just seen the speed record for the fastest wheel driven vehicle is called the Vesco Turbinator 2. It nice. was driven by a man called Dave Spangler. Okay, this is wow. my favourite car in the world. Tell me how fast. Yes. It did uh, 463 miles per hour. Good lord. Yeah. What was it powered by? How many jet engines? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, no, we just said it was wheel driven. So. Boost. Yes. 
Automation challenge. Oh no. Least amount of power, 300 miles per hour. Um. You just use the GM. Well, well, it depends. Beam NG or automation. Ooh. Because all. You mean Because that beam NG is kind of a bit sketchy because it calculates drag differently, and also there's actually an inbuilt speed limiter at about 270 miles an hour, I think. Okay, ignore so, the energy then just go on. Maybe. Well, there's a way of removing it, but I haven't figured out how. Drop a car I'm, off a cliff. I'm highly intelligent like that. Yeah, sure, that might do it. <laughs> just I, I've just saying, noticed like, this car has the single worst rear windows on any automobile. What's wrong with it? Like, look how much black, like, cladding's around it. It's basically, like, the actual window bit is, like, a tenth of what the actual window surface area is. It's a Pontiac. Is. When is anything going to be behind you? It's a 2009 Pontiac as well, the very final one. Hmm. I've just seen there's a record. There's two records for radio-controlled cars. Hmm. Okay. One of them is for rocket, and the other one is powered. Uh, is battery-powered. How quick was the battery powered off? 202 miles an hour. Jesus. Yeah, and the rocket one was only 210. So Did they ever like try and like hit a crash test dummy with it or something to see if it's like <laughs> <I> over <laughs> or if it obliterates itself? <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you reckon is more likely to happen? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Human feet are strong. As I mentioned in that like fascinating horror thing I watched, that guy got like decapitated at 50 mile an hour and the person's foot didn't even feel the thing. She literally uh, fucking soup kicked a guy's head off his shoulders and she didn't feel fuck all. Nice. It was his fault, don't worry about it. Yeah, hold on, yeah, current speed record is Koenigsegg Gear at RS, 277.87 miles an hour. Hell yeah, Kristen von Koenigsegg. Yep, the convertible solstice got replaced in Forza 3 by this. Because this is the quicker sources, and it's better because it's the hard top. And the superior one. Yeah, yes. hard top. And as we know, a hard top makes a car better. That's why the Porsche Cayman's a million times better than the Porsche Boxster. It has a roof. Literally. As opposed to figuratively? Yeah. Okay. Also, I like how the fucking Gordon Murray car, they've released a sports version of a car that doesn't... it... doesn't even... exist yet. Uh, there are a few prototypes and stuff that... That car's gonna be forgotten about within weeks. No <laughs> one's going to care. Uh... yeah... All I'm saying is that thing's gonna get slaughtered by the Valkyrie, I reckon. It's gonna get slaughtered by anything. Oh, no, no, not anything. Once it's USP, it's... it has a fan. Woo. There's yeah, probably a reason is... we don't make fan or aerodynamics in road cars. Yeah, because most people don't actually care about downforce. Well, no, it's not even just that. It's like... I'm, I'm sure, like, fucking when Braven showed up with the fan car, if it was like... You know what I mean? Like, if they could have adapted that for road use, they probably would have done. Would they? Because people haven't been using downforce much to begin with. Oh, Brabham made road cars. So. No? Yeah. When? There was a Brabham road car. There is now, like, what, like, half a century after they went? Quarter of a century? I don't know. When did they go bankrupt? No, the fucking Brabham was making cars in the 60s. Yeah, sports cars, as in, like, racing cars. No, no. No, not the Bahamas. Yeah, there's, as far as I can work out, not a single racing uh, road car from Brabham, as in, like, the actual thing. Oh, they worked on the 164 Pro car. Neat.
That is the ugliest thing I've ever... No, actually, it's not that bad. What are you talking about? The BT-64 or... BT-62, it literally looks like every hypercar. Oh, 62, that's what I meant. Yeah. It literally just looks like every hypercar. Bro, can you design me a hypercar? Yeah. Brabham F1 team committed to die in 92. They lasted to 92. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, now it's mental how long some of those teams. It's like Lotus. I think they died out the same year or something. Ninety. Or maybe a little longer. One. I don't know. Because they were sponsored by Camel for the last few years. Yeah. Then they had like one year of paid drivers, and then they went away. And then they came back, and they had Roman Grosjean. So you know how that must have ended. Anyways, Mitsubishi and Subaru, big yeah, well. Mitsubishi and Subaru weren't really the biggest rivals in the rally days because it conveniently skips over like Toyota existing. So. Hmm. Yeah, but they didn't make a car that was basically the same as the other one, but in a different color. Yeah, fair point. But one of them has a boxer engine, so they must be very different. Oh, the boxer engine's cool. Do you know, I'm sure. still amazed by that one statistic that they uh, have on the uh, the 99 Corolla. What? It got a podium in 95% of the events it entered. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> well, at least that's what they told me when I pre-ordered WRC 9 and got the car, so... <laughs> maybe they're oh. wrong, but... They, they hyped it up for you. <laughs> maybe. Uh... Corolla was successful, though. It had four WRC victories. Yeah. Three of them in 1998, and one of them in 1999. What was it the 98 they gave me? I don't remember, they gave me a car. It's 1999. Cool. It won the title, despite only winning... Yeah, it got the manufacturer's title. Or they yeah. Or McInerney and won it. the drivers. Because Carl's signs finally exploded. Yeah. Like say, I will say, in, there you go. In, in Rally, the best driver seems to always win the driver's championship, but the best car always seems to win the manufacturers. Yeah. I think. It sounds like it's, WRC has a logical point scoring system that just sort of works. What do you mean? As in, like, their point scoring system is just pretty good. Yeah, what they do differently like to other... Like, you get a lot more points for winning something. I think they have the old, um... Like, or at least they used to, I don't know about now, but they have the old, um... F1-style point system that they had in the 90s. Which gave you less points 10, for 6, winning. 10, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, or something. So, comparatively, less points for winning versus Shut the fuck up! F1. I know what I'm about. Rallying, cool. Uh, apparently not. Um... Also, you're wrong, actually. What? About in modern rally, that's not so much true. The best driver gets the most points. Okay, I don't watch modern rally or old rally. I literally well, know no, like two thousand and eight like, um, rally. It's like watching a call. If you look into who's the new Sebastian, I forgot his last name. I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you actually look at him, like half of, I think twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, he won the title and he only won one rally. Yeah, but is his name Peter Solberg? No, I don't care. Uh, Oliver Solberg got COVID over the weekend, so he can't do rally. Oh, good. In Maybe his dad will Finland. take his place and finally get a second championship. <laughs> it was stolen. Still salty about 2004. Clearly. I didn't even watch it. I was barely conscious Was it 04? Yeah, 04 was the close one. Because 04 was closed, and then it was the Gronholm years for 05... Oh, well, no, hold on, where am I? 05, 06, I think, was the Gronholm years, because that's when M Sport got the new focus. Okay, so in 1999, there were only two races in which the Corolla didn't get a podium. Yeah. Yeah. So... That that's might pretty be good. 95. Yeah. Especially considering no one remembers the poor Corolla. Why was Skoda racing there? What, the Octavia? Yes. Oh, 
The Skoda that Octavia. Uh, listen, ask Daniel. The Skoda Octavia is the best rally car to ever exist, ever. Also, I like how any Toyota was smart by fielding a hatchback instead of a saloon car. Yeah, oh, no, that was the focus. Well, and the no, Toyota. hold on, I I can explain what happened there. Mm. Toyota was the first ones to get smart, mm -hmm. and then Ford did it with the Focus, and then Peugeot was like, we could enter the 307, but why don't we just enter the 206 and give it a really long body kit so it confines the dimensions? And they did, and ruined Rally forever. <laughs> Had that ruin it? Because it was way smaller than any other car, so it was like really nimble. And it's beautiful. And that's probably the reason why we've got the Fiesta and all the small, tiny hatchbacks instead of proper cars in actual rally today. Yeah, we we did get the Yaris GR. Yeah, but it should have been a crawler. Or CHR, actually. Just to no. really irritate people. No. Do you not think crossovers would actually be pretty good rally cars? No, they'd be terrible because they're tall. No, but you think about it as well. As like a marketing thing, it'd probably be better as well because you've got to like make crossovers look rufty and tufty. Okay, I agree as a marketing thing, but as a, I like race cars to be good. See, uh, I've got to no. be honest. I wasn't completely against the idea of M Sport running Pumas. Oh, I was. <laughs> I there again, I guess they've got selfie Esther STs, haven't they? So. I need to go to Mr. M Sports' house and punch him in the face a couple of times. Oh, I forgot his name. He's out in the Cotswolds, I think. It's literally oh. based out of his house. <laughs> oh, good. It would be easy Like, to... he's got a farm and it's literally M Sport is built out of a reconditioned barn. They did, like, a behind-the-scenes thing and it's literally, like, they're building, like, Fiesta WRC chassis and then, like, right next door they've got the Bentley GT3 cars. I'm gonna run him over with his own tractor. And then in like his back garden he has a uh, racetrack to run the cars around. Oh yeah, just casually. Please tell me it's the same one they take the rally cars and the Bentley around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. It's like this tight twisty course that has like 15 different layouts. It's pretty I cool. I typed in M Sport and I got BMWs. <laughs> For just two hundred ninety nine a month, experience the BMW one sixteen D M Sport. Why would they call it M Sport? Because they have M. I got Hoonigan's <laughs> Racing's headquarters before I got M Sports. <laughs> it's did you put M dash Sport? Yes. Mm. Or MSRT. MSRT. Yeah, that's what it gets shortened to occasionally. That's what they have on the actual Fiesta rally cars. They have MSRT written on them. MSRT. Because it is called M, M Sport because the guy who owns it is called. Um, oh, fucking hell, what's his name? The first link I got Malcolm. was to a Yu Gi Oh movie. <laughs> Just type in fucking Bentley GT3 and go from there. I'm on M Sports actual Malcolm Wilson, that's a name. Malcolm Wilson Racing, yeah, that was it as well. He was a rally driver back in the day, and he did crap, so he decided to build cars instead. It sounds like me, but I found out at a much earlier age. And then he built like a few cars and then Ford was like, Hey, you know this rally project we're dumping like millions into? We don't care about it anymore. You take it. And so they took it and Carl Sainz almost won the title. <laughs> and then Ford was like, Eh, do you know what? We'll have this back. And then a couple years later they were like, Eh, we don't want it again. And that's literally been the entire time. <laughs> They're just trading whether they want it or not with fucking Malcolm. Dovin B Hall. I always feel bad for M Sport because they get like completely like clowned in modern WRC. Actually I say that OGA drove for them and like won the title twice under M Sport, but like these days it's like Hyundai and Toyota just put a gazillion quid into each of the teams and they're just sat there just going, uh, yeah, we're, we're the underdogs. <laughs> they have the coolest looking the... car. Really? Yeah, the Fiesta looks cool as fuck. 
I'm still a fan of the Yaris. I like the Yaris because it's so far away from what an actual Yaris looks like. <laughs> yeah, as race cars should be. Yeah, but I mean like... What? I like the Yaris from a comedic level, though. Well, the I think the actual Fiesta WRC actually is a good-looking car. The best-looking race car is the fastest one, so as far as I'm concerned, it's the Toyota. I think Hyundai won the, the manufacturer's title last year. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> How? Toyota's top two dri drivers were both first and second. But Hyundai had more cars. That's I hardly think. fair, then, is it? <laughs> Hyundai had Sebastian Loeb. He needed to win somewhat last year. God. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> did he actually win in a Hyundai? No, he didn't win. Of course he didn't. He's oh. been shit ever since he came back. We did, we, no one knows why he came out of retirement. He should have just no, stayed I mean, retired. He, he retired he like... Stage? It's like Lewis Hamilton retiring after the end of this year and then coming back for, like, racing point. Like, who cares? <laughs> Actually, no, hold on. What's the arch nemesis of Mercedes? For no. Yeah, for no, Ferrari's an accurate one, actually. Actually, no, Ferrari's too bad. Ferrari Red, Red, Bull. Red Bull. Yeah, it's like if Hamilton retired, then returned on, like, a part-time schedule with Red Bull and, like, just sort of play six every race and decide to be an Alex Albon. Car lost signs. Fucking hell. Yeah, and I won the title. Yeah. Cool. They shouldn't have done, but they did. Actually, yeah, I'm they not got five more them. points. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Oh, no, they did. I don't know. Well, they didn't. They had loads of second places, so I could only assume that Welsh kid was throwing it in barriers. Yeah, he was shit. Lot. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, he, uh, oh yeah, thingy uh, got a podium. Uh, yeah. Roven pair has some got a podium, apparently. Uh, yeah. He, 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 yeah, he's, he, In he's, he's, Sweden. he's 19 and got a podium. Okay. Why am I old? Like, <laughs> yeah, I hate aging. Yeah. There's, oh, there's a F3 driver who's born in 2005. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know. Is it CR? <laughs> 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 this is what I'm doing with my Bitcoin money. I'm just throwing him. Oh my god! Series. Yeah, he's like he's our only hope now as well because he's like by far away the youngest. We'll get him into a racing program. One day That's we'll genius. get him to sign for Toro Rosso, so we could be yelled at by Doctor Marco. Yeah, I agree. I can deck him. Do you reckon me? You could take on Helmut Marco. I think anyone could beat Helmut Marco in a fight. It's just oh, I don't know. It's I just reckon... whether you can survive the verbal lashing. <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, you're a bit too bitch to. I, to be honest, oh, you, I'm probably I... a bit too bitch to survive Helmut Marco. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, he'd kill it's me. Fucking, that words. fucking clip of Kiviat's still the best, though. Did... Yeah, you're pretty shit in the wet, yeah. <laughs> and just puts the phone down. <laughs> it's great. So good. Why are you putting CR into a junior team? Because we don't actually want to help him. No. We want to be like his right hype point. men that sit there and go, yeah, we're really proud of him, and meanwhile, behind the scenes, <laughs> we're like, we can't wait for him to get torn to shreds. We're just there on rich energy money. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we can get that as a personal sponsor? And then eventually, by the age <gasps> of 25, he's going to be depressed and have nothing better to do with than racing the Porsche Carrera Cup, UK. Oh, God. does Rich Energy have a contact thing? Should I email them now? Oh my God! And yes. Be like, no, the subscription. How do I contact? Trade. <laughs> At William Stories back bitches on Twitter. <laughs> Fill in our sign up form so we can talk about your business. Let's talk. Say so, yeah. Oh, listen, my dad oh. owns a club. <laughs> <laughs> on that business form, they misspelled first name, so it says fire name. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Because Roman Grosjean <laughs> caught fire. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes, that is why they went for it. Put me what? into a junior team. Daniel, you're too old to go to a junior team now, man. Yeah, you're older than me, and I'm too old. Yeah, exactly. That's actually incredible. They've... 
<laughs> Fire name. How do you spell? How do you? How do you spell? I know he dislikes it, but come on, you're not that bad. I'm. To be honest with you, do you know the only thing I'm thinking about? What? How soon can I wrap this stream up? Because I kind of want to order pizza. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but at the same Where, time, you, at the same you time, stop I've, got, it now. I've got frozen food in. So like, I kind of. I don't know. I don't really want to spend like thirteen pound eighty. Oh. They all fall like dominoes, dominoes. There's a 26 year old in F2, it's fine. What, fucking Daladila or whatever his name is? Daladia. Uh, hold on, I'll be like two minutes. I still love the post of this where it's like makes from Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Inferno, what's your favorite Canadian girl? Good answer. Make salad and ham. I don't right. have salad there's or ham. Cars. What? There's Canadian cars? Yeah, there's um, the Brickland. And... I mean, technically, if you really want to go down the route of getting punched in the face, um, technically speaking, the Challenger, Charger, Chrysler 300C and 4 GT are all made in Ontario. What's your favorite Mexican car? Um, the one that Hammond re reviewed on top. Oh right, I was gonna say the Dodge <laughs> Attitude, but that works too. Do you know what the Dodge Attitude is? It's a Hyundai accent that they market as a Dodge over there for some reason. Oh god! And it's called the Attitude. Oh god, that. Oh, that looks hideous. It looks beautiful, I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh. Better than Delidia? Yeah, probably. Sergio Perez? Uh, listen, I'm better than Sergio Perez. Although Sergio Perez is younger than I am, so. What an overtake. Oh, excuse me. I'm too good for this shit, man. I tell you what, you son of a bitch. I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mac Miller's in this race. I thought he was dead. <laughs> Inferno the Fox. Yes. What's your opinion on Daft Punk dying? You didn't listen to them, did you? Music, but it, very little of it was, uh, you know, what I consider to be. You sound quite far away, by the way. Hmm? You sound Probably. really far away. Fuck's sake. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. <laughs> no worries. Um, I know only one Daft Punk, so Daft Punk song, and it's lucky, and it makes me want to stab myself in the eyeballs. So, I do not mm. mourn the death of Daft Punk. Although they did have that pretty good Kanye song. Mm. I like how Daniel always says you smell. It's like a fucking. It's always a thing. Oh, it was in my stream earlier. Yeah. Did he, he call you? That. Did you say you smell? Yeah. What did he you said stream? Smell. Hmm. What did you stream? Uh, Borderlands Three. Oh. Basically, nothing. It's something you don't play. I played oh, uh, Borderlands Two. For how long? Three hours. Hmm. In a single day. Oh, you and, the old college I, I played it for three hours in a single day, and I was like, "Wow, this is really good." And then never played it again. <laughs> I'm not joking. I bought it about seven years ago, and I've literally only played it once. It's over there somewhere. Mm. And I don't even think it's a bad yeah, game. I, it's actually all right. Yeah, Borderlands 2 is actually um, pretty good. It's all um, right. Though it does get rather difficult once you get to higher levels. Bring me your higher love. 
Sorry so, yeah, for being I'd... late. Yeah, don't worry about it. You haven't missed but, much. Yeah, I'm missed all the solstice. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a little bit um, out of it because I did uh, stream around 10 hours today. 10 hours? Yes. What time did you start? Uh, 8 o'clock. Why did well, you stream for eight, 10 hours? Half eight in, I started... I started streaming at half eight in the morning and uh, stopped streaming about quarter past six. Why did you stream for that long? A uh, community event. Oh. I'm participating in. Why don't you just take my job if you can afford to stream for fucking ten hours? I can't do that. I'd lose. <laughs> I've already lost all interest well, and I've been going for 10 minutes. Well, it's I haven't streamed in God knows how long. Spammed so, Inferno you know, with TRE dab, fuck yeah. <laughs> Spammed? You only did it once, you fucking prick. In the TRE dab men rise up. Had to remove the phone's body. <laughs> Fair enough. How's uh, the computer Inferno. going, by the way? Gone. Huh? Uh, the guy in chat. Oh. <laughs> Inferno why? Inferno why not? Inferno why? <laughs> Did you build a good following, get some Twitch Prime subscriptions? <laughs> I, don't I, haven't know Twitch enough, works. I haven't had enough um, people in, in chat to... I haven't had enough people in chat to get um, subs enabled. Damn. You'll get there one day. Probably. I don't know. I don't know how Twitch works. Why has this got the steering uh, wheel of a Chevy Cobalt? I've literally only just realised that. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Daniel. Promote me like one of your French streamers. Although not quite as much as the boy Josh Revel. Daniel Revel's in his Revel promotion. Can't stream for three hours, imagine ten. Yeah, same. No, I can stream for more than six hours, it's just I have to get, like, suitably pissed during it. <laughs> <laughs> like the last time. I just started drinking whiskey halfway through it. I've <laughs> got nothing to mix it with today, though. I've got a bottle of water. Apparently, that's what Winston Churchill used to do, but... I, yeah, subscribe to Josh Rebel. <laughs> oh, mm. boy. Could easily stream for like 12 hours. Yeah, but... You see, you, you think about, you think you could, but I don't think you could. Like, I, I think a lot of, I can do a lot of things, and I think I can't do a lot of things, and I surprise myself both for and against. Mostly against, but sometimes for. I've got no alcohol. See, that's, that's your problem with streaming for 12 hours. You need to be like Inferno and just become a full-blown alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, this is Borderlands 3. No. <laughs> I move my character by sleeping on the keyboard. <laughs> you got like an actual streaming thing or is it a, the PS4 thing? It's just streaming through the PS4. I don't have. Um, Do you have that silly oh, overlay on that, like all PS4 streamers have? What with the uh, chat on the side? Yeah. No, I turned that off. Oh, thank God. Cause I gotta be honest. As, as soon as I see that, I'm just like, I. This is oh, no. I know it's a bit snobbish, but it's like this stream is not gonna be entertaining. <laughs> yeah. You see, I, I. I turned it off because people were saying it was kind of distracting seeing chat twice. You know, okay, one, yeah, once that. on Twitch and or YouTube, and once again on on the screen because it kind of forces them to you know go you know full screen, yeah. which some people might not want to do that. Like I don't mind being on having to you know cock my head about ninety degrees just to see what people are saying in chat, if yeah. anything. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Next time I'm going to be taking a look at the Class A North American Torso. Join us for that. Until then, farewell.
Of your father with love 